Hello students, my name is Neerti Said and thanks for watching it video word videos. My topic for the presentation is the ninth section of the chapter excretion and osmoregulation that is excretory products and their elimination of class 11th standard. In this presentation, we will be studying about the accessory excretory organs. Okay. In addition to kidneys, the skin and lungs are also help in the removal of unwanted toxic waste formed during metabolic activities. Okay. So, we will be studying the role of lungs, the role of liver, the role of skin and uh, role of intestine in excretion. Okay. So, first we have lungs. Okay. So, role of lungs in excretion. Lungs, they act as an excretory organ by throwing out waste product in the form of CO2. That is 18 liters per day and water vapor during expiration. CO2 and water are the byproducts of cellular respiration. Most of the water is utilized for the activity of the cells and the remaining part is thrown out by the lungs in the form of water vapor. CO2 is transported from tissues to lungs by blood circulation. CO2 from capillaries they diffuse through the capillary wall and alveolar wall into alveolus. From the alveolus, it is removed by expiration. Lungs, they also perform osmoregulation by evaporation. Evaporation of water from the surface of lungs cools the body and, it, and that is known as thermoregulation. Some volatile substances can be smelt in an exhaled air of some persons. It indicates abnormality. For example, in a diabetes mellitus affected person, acetone can be smelt in his exhaled air due to metabolism of large amount of fat. So this was all about the lungs, uh, role of lungs in excretion. Now coming on to liver, role of liver in excretion. As we know, urea is formed in the liver, which is eliminated through kidneys. Liver cells, they also degrade the hemoglobin of worn out red blood corpuscles into bile pigments. And what are bile pigments? They are bilirubin, biliverdin, okay. And liver cells, they also secrete, uh, sorry, excrete cholesterol. This is cholesterol and certain uh, products of steroid hormones, vitamins and many drugs. Liver secretes these substances in the bile. The bile carries these substances to the intestine and they are passed out with feces. Feces means excreta. Okay. Students, role of intestine in excretion I have missed out but yes, the intestine also plays a vital role in uh, excretion. The epithelial cells of the intestine, they excrete certain salts such as iron and calcium. These salts are eliminated with the feces. Okay, now coming on to third that is skin okay and uh, what comes in a skin a skin in mammals they act as an excretory organ it secretes water salt and some urea this excretion is in the form of perspiration and what is that perspiration is sweat so this is the structure of uh, skin. Skin is made up of two layers. Okay, uh, two layers: the epidermis and dermis. See, this is uh, dermis. Okay, and what is this? This is epidermis. 
So we'll talk about the epidermis first, okay? Epidermis is the outermost layer of skin which is made up of dead and horny cells which are replaced continuously from a layer lower to it. That is Malphigian layer. That means this is the Malphigian layer, the yellow lining, okay? This is the yellow lining Malphigian layer. So epidermis is the outermost layer of a skin which is made up of dead and uh, horny cells which are replaced continuously from the layer lower to it is called as Malphigian layer, okay? Uh, and uh, it also contains uh, opening of various glands and has an exposed part of the hair. This is Malphigian layer, students. Okay, it lies just below the. Uh, it is lies just below to the epidermis, and that is Malphigian layer. So, and this Malphigian layer has certain openings. Okay, certain openings such as of various glands, and they have an exposed part of hair also. Okay, and uh, that is the hair shaft. Shaft. Okay, and uh, now coming on to the dermis part, which is the second part of a skin. This is dermis. Okay, uh, dermis. This is the inner layer of a skin, which is made up of tough fibrous connective tissue. This tissue is filled with blood and lymph vessels, nerve endings, and sweat glands and sebaceous glands. Okay, sweat gland. See, as you can see, sweat gland, sebaceous gland. So it has. Uh, you you can say that this tissue is filled with blood, lymph vessels, nerve endings, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. Okay. First, we'll see um, sweat glands. Okay, uh, sweat glands are excretory and osmoregulatory. This is sweat gland. Okay, so it is excretory and osmoregulatory and thermoregulatory in in function. They are uh, there are about two million sweat glands all over the skin. They are more in number on palm and sole. Okay. And each uh, sweat gland is tubular, having a basal coiled part which is embedded in the dermis. As you can see that its uh, coiled part is embedded in the dermis and this is dermis, right? Uh, so its coiled part is embedded in the dermis and the upper longer duct. See, this is the duct, okay? It opens on the surface of a skin. This is the surface of a skin, okay? Through sweat pores. The basal coiled part is surrounded by dense network of capillaries, blood capillaries, okay? And the sweat gland, it absorbs excess salt, water, waste products from capillaries and it forms the sweat, okay? Students, sweat is acidic in nature. The pH lies between 4 to 6, uh, you can say that uh, sweat is a mixture of water uh, which is about 90%, salt uh, which is about 2% and CO2 which is about uh, 3%, urea, uric acid, amino acids, lactic acid and ascorbic acid. The sweat is discharged on the surface of skin. See, this is the surface of skin and sweat is discharged on the surface of skin. However, primary function of sweat is to produce cooling effect and maintain the body temperature. Okay, so the primary function of sweat is to give a cooling effect on the body's surface. Okay, now comes sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are uh, also present in the dermis okay see this is here okay uh, it, and sebaceous glands they are present uh, near the hair roots this is the hair roof and this is the hair shaft so uh, the sebaceous glands they are present near the uh, roots of the hair so and they uh, sebaceous gland they are alveolar glands which is present near the hair follicles this is hair follicle okay this is hair follicle and uh, they are present near to it okay and sebaceous gland they secrete an oily substance called sebum 
which lubricates the hair and the skin and keeps hair polished and supple the sebum is rich in hydrocarbons such as fatty acid sterols and waxes it has bactericidal and fungicidal properties that means no bacteria or no fungi can survive near to it because it is bactericidal and fungicidal in nature and sebaceous gland also prevents excess evaporation of water the sebaceous glands in the auditory canal of ear excrete numerous pigments granules and fat droplets which together form ear wax okay and the scientific term of ear wax is cerumen okay cerumen now coming on to role of saliva in excretion uh, role of salivary glands or saliva in excretion is uh, uh, as we know that saliva is secreted by salivary glands that contains some urea which is passed into digestive tract nitrogen in the urea is utilized by microbes of intestine to make amino acids and then they are absorbed by body to build proteins so you can say that saliva eliminates a small amount of nitrogenous waste so this was all about the accessory excretory organs in my next section of the presentation will be studying about the kidney disorders okay so till then keep watching edipedia word videos